welcome viewers to another cornerstone connection lesson review we are at lesson number two seeing is believing but before we begin let us pray dear heavenly compassion father lord thank you for giving us the opportunity to go through this lesson lord lord please allow our viewers to learn something from this presentation and use it in their everyday lives may my soul precious say my pray amen amen the key text this week comes to us from John 4 verses 48 to 50 and it says unless you people see signs and wonders Jesus told him you will never believe the royal official said sir come down before my child dies go Jesus replied your son will live the man took Jesus at his word and departed and in the book desire of ages page 200 it says the nobleman wanted to see the fulfillment of his prayers before he should believe but he had to accept the word of jesus that his request was heard and the blessing granted this lesson we also have to learn not because we see or feel that god hears us we are to believe we are to trust in his promises when we have asked for his blessing we should believe that we receive it and thank him that we have received it. This week's lesson is about faith and trusting in God's word. The royal official who came to Jesus in Cana to beseech his intervention as his son lay dying becomes a lesson in trust for us all. He came believing Jesus must follow him home to heal his son. The nobleman made a favorable answer to that request, a test to accept Jesus as the Messiah. But God's ways are not man's ways. He didn't realize the Savior had beheld his affliction before he left home. He had a measure of faith, enough that he came to Cana to ask for the most wonderful of blessings, that Jesus would restore health to his son. Jesus had a greater gift in mind that involved not only healing the boy but also saving the nobleman and his family while laying the groundwork for his earthly ministry in Capernaum. Speaking to the nobleman and to those around him, Jesus said, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The nobleman grasped the import of those words and leaped in faith to realize that the word of the Lord was sufficient when Jesus said, Go your way, your son lives. Indeed, at that very instant, the boy was healed. His words and that lesson in faith echo to our hearts today. Now let's get into the lesson. Now, the Bible passage that is the focus of this week's lesson begins in John 4 verses 43 with the phrase, after the two days, meaning the day after the events recorded in verses 5 to 39. Now, the journey of verses 3 to 5 is now resumed. In verse 45, the phrase, they had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival is probably a reference to the incidents of John 2 whereby the cleansing of the temple led to reports that Jesus had declared himself the Messiah. The meeting between the royal official and Jesus took place in Canaan, which is approximately 16 miles from Capernaum where the sick boy was located. The request by the boy's father is the first recorded request for healing made of Jesus. Jesus knew the father had in his own mind made conditions concerning his belief in Jesus as the Messiah. Unless his petition should be granted, he would not receive him as the Messiah. While the officer waited in agony of suspense, Jesus said, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Like a flash of light, the Savior's words to the nobleman laid bare in his heart. He saw that his motives in seeking Jesus were selfish. His vacillating faith appeared to him in his true character. In deep distress, he realized 
that his doubt might cost the life of his son. He knew that he was in the presence of one who could read thoughts and to whom all things were possible. Go thy way, he said, thy son liveth. The nobleman left the Savior's presence with a peace and joy he had never known before. Not only did he believe that his son would be restored, but with a strong confidence he trusted in Christ as the Redeemer. The royal official's faith was emboldened by his experience with Jesus. He didn't rush home a four or five hour trip to see what had happened to his son. His assurance in Jesus was such that his servants met him following morning some distance from home to report the boy had turned for the better about the seventh hour, that is about one o'clock p.m. in the afternoon by today's clock, the same hour that Jesus had told his son, had told the father that his son would live. So Keith, I have some questions for you. The first one, why do you think the official came to see Jesus in the first place? Now, Jesus was grieved that his own nation required outward signs of his messiahship. Again and again, Jesus had marveled at their unbelief, but he marveled even more at the faith of the nobleman who came to him. The, mo the nobleman did not question his power, he only believed. He believed that Jesus could heal his son. He had not seen the Savior, but reports of, he, of what he had heard inspired him with faith, and his faith brought forth a miracle. And the second question, what do you think caused the nobleman's change of view? No, Darren. The nobleman left his home with every thought of taking the Savior back to his house to heal his son. However, Jesus' words welled up in him confidence that what he came in search of was found. And so, by faith, he left for home, assured did in his heart that all was well. The phrase, seeing is believing, remains meaningful today because its message rings true to many people. If you can't trust your own eyes, what can you trust? The paradox for a Christian is that faith ultimately relies on the unseen. In essence, faith is believing without seeing. God desires to bless us more than we can imagine and longs for our faith to be strong so we can easily ask, believe, and claim his promise. Well guys, we have reached the end of another Cornerstone Lesson Review. But before we leave, I'd like to leave you with a thought. People rarely deal in absolutes anymore. Red lights used to mean stop. Now they mean stop, but it is okay to turn right sometimes. A copy machine used to make copies. Now they are multifunctional devices that copy, fax, print, scan, sort, staple, hole punch, and provide internet access. Some absolutes that were part of this week's lesson remain. They include that God's word is sure, that God desires to bless us beyond our highest thoughts, and most importantly, we can turn to God as an ever-present help in time of need. Our very salvation depends on trusting that God's word is true and will accomplish what it says. For this week guys, let's spend more time in God's word so that we can strengthen our faith in Him. Amen, Darren. But before we go, let us pray. Their most kind and compassionate Father, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for everything that you have done and will be doing. Lord, I ask you to please bless each and every one of our viewers, Lord Jesus. Guide them and protect them in their daily lives. Lord, I ask you to please help this video to be shared with others so that they will know more about your word and be drawn closer to you. Be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning on. 
tune in with us. Please join us next week as we look at lesson number three. Do you want to get well? Bye, guys. Have a happy Sabbath. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and, and subscribe. And please hit the notification bell so <laughs> that you can be notified of our next video. Let us